Hello and welcome back to our channel. Today we'll explore the captivating subject of friendship. We'll begin with a story about a man who lived life without friends. When quizzed on why, his wise and philosophical response likened friendship to a diamond. Precious, costly and littered with counterfeits. His perspective resonated with millions of people who've suffered the sting of insincere friendships. These were not bitter words but reflections stemming from his life experiences. Intriguingly, he drew a comparison between friendship and a diamond, an analogy that seemed exceptionally fitting. Just like diamonds, genuine friendships are a rarity. Amidst a world teeming with people, true friends are hard to come by. It isn't about the number of acquaintances one has, but the emotional connection one shares with them. Authentic friendship goes beyond casual talks to encompass understanding and profound connections. Friends who comprehend your silence, perceive your concealed tears, sense your ongoing battles are rarer than the rarest diamonds. Further, he expressed that friends are costly, not monetarily but in terms of emotional investment. Friendship requires you to commit your time, trust, vulnerabilities and feelings. It involves sharing your secrets, aspirations, apprehensions and dreams. It's an investment in your deepest self. Drawing a parallel with a diamond, born under extreme heat and pressure, friendship is formed and tested in the vessel of life's challenges. Naturally there are plenty of fakes, much like in the world of diamonds. Many people act as friends but are not. They may project the picture of a friend but when trouble happens, their true personalities show. They may like the fun, laughter and social gatherings, but when you require a shoulder to lean on, a hand to hold, and a heart to empathize with your pain, they are the crystal zirconias of friendships resembling diamonds but lacking their resilience, worth and brilliance. Reflectively, the man stated that one mistake frequently opens the way for another. The mistake of trusting an unworthy person, the foolishness of opening your heart to someone undeserving, the error of believing in false assurances, and it may even lead you to doubt the existence of real diamonds, seeing only fakes. His thoughts were validated by another man who came in stating that friends should be cherished and valued, just like the precious gems they are compared to. However, he also highlighted a harsh reality. In life, true friends are few and far between. However, he did not voice this with regret, but accepted it as a fact of life. Let's get started as we explore what the absence of friends says about a person's life. Haruki Murakami's book Norwegian Wood, set in the bright and spreading town of Tokyo in the 1960s, explores this theme through his characters. The story unfolds through the eyes of Toru, the protagonist, who is a college student navigating the chaotic landscape of life and love. When asked about his strange attitude and lonely habits, Toru often laughs it off with a puzzling smile. However, there is one scene in the book where a character finally finds the courage to ask him a profound question, one that many of us often wonder about. Do you like loneliness? Toru's answer to this question is impressive into his character. He does not directly say that he likes being alone, but he does give an interesting response that reveals how he likes to avoid making extra friends and colleagues. It is not because he dislikes social interactions or feels uncomfortable around people. It is not because he enjoys being alone or prefers the company of his thoughts over others. The reason is far more profound and complex. In his own words, he does not want to be disappointed in people. This feeling represents Toru's previous experiences, disappointments, and heartbreaks. It is a reflection of his journey. A journey filled with the chaos of the world around him, the complicated nature of human relationships, and the heartbreaks and the unpredictability of life itself. His statement implies a deep-seated fear of disappointment, betrayal and pain. It showcases his careful approach towards human relationships, hinting at a painful past and a cautious present. It is a testament to his emotional resilience but also a sad commentary on his solitary existence. It reveals a truth about human nature, about our fear of disappointment, our tendency to shield ourselves from potential pain, our instinct to survive, and our struggle to find meaning in a world that can often seem cruel and indifferent. When asked if he likes loneliness, a character responds that he doesn't like being alone. He just avoids making extra acquaintances because he doesn't want to be disappointed in people. There's a parable about the friendship of a boy and an apple tree. This story starts in a peaceful small village, nestled in the heart of a sunlit valley, where the winds whisper tales of yore and the earth teems with life. In this village, there was a unique friendship that bloomed between an innocent boy and a generous apple tree. Their friendship was as pure as the morning dew that glistens on the apple leaves, as innocent as the boy, and as deep as the roots of the apple tree. As the seasons passed, the bond between them strengthened, 
their friendship a silent testament to the beauty of shared joy and companionship. The boy, full of life, would spend his days playing under the shade of the tree. To him, the tree was more than just a provider juicy apples. It was his confidant, his sanctuary, his best friend. However, as the wheel of time spun, the boy grew older. He started to explore the world outside, drawn to the lure of new experiences and friendships. His daily connection with the apple tree became less frequent, and his laughter less resonant in the quiet valley. The boy was slowly drifting away, consumed by world of adolescence, but the tree, steadfast in its devotion, continued to shed its fruit. Even when stormy clouds of life darkened the boy's world, the tree remained a symbol of hope, offering its apples completely. The apples were not just mere fruits, they were symbols of the tree's unwavering support and care, glistening gems of nourishment that helped the boy navigate his tough times. Despite this, the boy began to lose sight of their once beautiful friendship. Consumed by his own problems and desires he failed to recognize the selfless love the tree had for him. In a desperate attempt to escape his dilemmas, he made the heart-wrenching decision to cut down his once beloved friend. With every strike of his sword the echoes of their shared laughter and moments faded. The tree that once stood tall providing shade and apples was reduced to a lonely stump. Time passed and all that remained was the damaged stump. It was a sight, a stark contrast to the vibrant apple tree it once was. The stump stood abandoned, its once lively spirit filled now with a sense of profound loss and desolation. It was stripped of its purpose, its identity, its friend. Yet, from the depth of its soul, a small green sprout emerged. It was a symbol of hope, of resilience, of rebirth. This tiny sprout, nurtured by the essence of the old tree, blossomed into a beautiful apple tree, bearing the legacy of its predecessor with grace. It stood and proud, a tribute to the unbreakable spirit of the old tree. One day, a new boy approached the tree. As he reached out to touch its bark, the tree hesitated, crippled by its past experiences. It had lost faith in honest and sincere friendship, wary of the pain that came with love and loss. Yet within its branches, it held the hope of a new beginning, another chance to experience the beauty of friendship. When a new boy approached the tree hesitated having lost faith in honest and sincere friendship. This story embodies the touching words of the legendary comic George Carlin, who so effectively stated that within every cynic lies a disheartened idealist. The message is profound and deeply resonates with many people who have experienced the intense hurt of disillusionment. Throughout the course of life, one is bound to encounter those who leave scars, those who extract a price for their companionship. Unfortunately, these experiences can often lead to a certain nervousness, a hesitance to believe in the fundamental goodness of people. Despite the pain inflicted by such experiences, people often find that isn't in forgetting the individuals who inflicted these wounds but rather, in maintaining the belief in the potential for honest sincere connections. People who have experienced the bitterness of betrayal, or the harshness of insincerity, often find themselves disillusioned. It's not the people who hurt them that they remember the most, it's the loss of their ability to trust and believe in humanity's capacity for genuine bonds. Consequently, they behind walls of despair and mistrust, protect them from further harm. However, the greatest hardship isn't necessarily forgetting those who caused the pain. It's about dealing with the loss of faith in the power and authenticity of human connections. It is about the difficulty of holding to the belief that true, sincere friendship is a physical reality, rather than something of an illusion. The most daunting task isn't about erasing the memories of friends who've inflicted pain. It's about the struggle of not losing faith in the possibility of honest and sincere connections. The story stands as a testament to the resilience of hope in the face of despair, reinforcing the idea that true friendship can survive the trials of challenges in life. As Damon Salvatore in The Vampire Diaries noted, getting over people who cause pain is hard, but arguing against it, the hardest thing is to forget such friends. If you encounter someone with no friends, don't rush to condemn them. Perhaps they've been an apple tree for someone too often and have stopped believing in honest and sincere friendship. Not having friends might indicate many reasons not to trust people and that's a sad reality. In the grand scheme of things we realize that true friendships are not about who has been in our lives the longest, but who came and never left. They are the ones who see the pain in our eyes while everyone else believes the smile on our face. They are the ones who can hear the silence in our voice while everyone else only hears the words. 
This is the true essence of friendship. It's not about being inseparable, but being separated and knowing nothing will change. So just as the apple tree stands firm, providing love and care even when it's left alone, we must stand strong and continue to value the bonds we've formed. Because true friendships, as rare as they are, are the ones that help us grow and become better versions of ourselves. Thank you for joining us on this inspiring journey. We hope that this video sheds light on the importance of real relationships and their impact on our lives. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel for more thought-provoking discussions. Remember, true friendships are like rare and valuable precious gems. Stay connected and keep reflecting. Until next time, keep nurturing your friendships and never let go of those who truly value you. In the world we live in, it's easy to get caught up in the hustle and bustle of life and lose sight of what truly matters. This scene is a reminder to take a step back and appreciate the relationships we have cultivated. Like a gardener nurturing his plants, we need to nurture our friendships, watering them with love, understanding, and patience. We need to prune away misunderstandings and weed out negativity. Remember, it's not about having a large number of friends, but about having friends who are there for you when you need them, who understand your silence, who help you pick up the pieces when you're broken. This is what true friendship is about, and this is what we need to nurture. In this digital age, let's not forget the essence of true connection. Let's make it a point to reach out, to listen, to understand, and to be there for each other. Just like the boy in the apple tree, let's stand by each other through thick and thin, after all, it's these bonds that give meaning to our existence, these bonds that help us grow, these bonds that add color to our lives. So let's make a promise today. A promise to nurture these bonds, to value these relationships, and to never let go of those who truly matter. Thank you for joining us in this journey of reflection. If you found this video meaningful, do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more such content. Remember we are all in this together and together we can make a difference. Until next time, keep nurturing your bonds, keep reflecting and keep growing.